So today we're going to finish up chapter six. We talked about um, color schemes last week, so you should be finishing that assignment where you choose to use at least four color schemes. Um, if you get done with that, if you're not in class, please take a picture of it and send it to me through email. The last part of our chapter is understanding the nature and the uses of color. So artists use color to create special effects in art. Um, they don't always depict the colors as they are. They could use them in a variety of different ways to create or express ideas and emotions. But when we start talking about paint, um, you need to know, we've talked about this earlier in the semester, that all paints are made up of three basic ingredients. The first ingredient is pigment, and it is a finely ground powder that we form when the paint is mixed with a binder. And a binder is a material that holds together the grains of pigment. Different types of paint require different types of binder. Um, and here we use uh, watercolor paints, and so the binder for that is gum arabic. Um, we use a polymer for acrylic paints, and we use usually a linseed oil for oil paints. You could also use um, some maybe non-traditional types of binders. A yoke um, has been used with tempera paints as a type of binder. So whatever type of binder you, you use depends on the, the kind of paint that you have. You need to know what kind of binder you have because then you have to figure out what the solvent is. This is the liquid that controls the thickness or the thinness of the paint. So turpentine or uh, another medium might be used to dissolve or thin oil paints. And for watercolors and tempera and acrylic paints, it is simply water. So uh, depending, depending on um, the effect that we want to have, we would pay attention to the different types of paint. Different paints, different surfaces all create a different effect for your painting, so you have to keep that in mind. When we source pigments, it could be anywhere from animals, vegetables, minerals, uh, plants, um, a kind of beetle, and the root of a certain plant were both sources of red pigments. Um, and today we usually have synthetic pigments. You can just go to the store and, and buy your paints. You don't have to source your pigments by yourself. Um, when we talk about optical color, that is the color that artists are trying to reproduce that looks most like what you are looking at. Of course, your color can change depending on where it is and the lighting that's around it, but when artists are trying to preserve that color exactly how people see it, we call that optical color. And arbitrary, arbitrary just means that we're going to assign colors based on an artist's preference. They just arbitrarily choose a color to express meaning in the color. Uh, for instance, if we're looking at this particular painting by Franz Marc, it's called The Yellow Cow. I don't know about you, but I have never seen a yellow cow with blue spots in real life. Um, he probably assigns uh, a meaning to that color, and then he paints according to what he thinks that color means to him. So we're arbitrarily assigning color to, to that. Artists also have figured out how to use color to create space. So warm colors seem to advance or be closer to you, and cool colors seem to recede, so you can create space that way. And depending on what types of colors you put next to each other, it can also create movement, feelings of excitement, or feelings of calm. So you really need to pay attention to what colors you're using to create the type of message that you want to send your viewer. The last one we're going to talk about is called tonality, so that when you look at an image like this, and if I were to look at this, overall I would say that it is blue. But if you look at it, in here, you see all of the colors. I see some greens, I see yellows, I might see some pinks. You really have all of the colors present, present, but overall, I would say that the tone of the painting would be mostly blue. So that takes us to the end of our chapter, and stay tuned, and I will tell you what you're going to do to end our chapter.